the Tiber Megillah was written on this. This is uh, this is called Gvil. This is like it's like leather. It's really difficult to work on. So it's sort of a rough. I mean, yeah. Gvil in Hebrew means means is unhewn stones are called Avne Gvil. Yeah. So this is un, this is non-split parchment. Okay. And this is what they used to have most Sifra Torah written on, which is one of the reasons they're very heavy. Uh, yeah. the, the Temanim, the Yemenites, they have big on Gvil. There was a big movement a few years back to try and bring back Gvil. Uh, uh -huh. But it's horrendously difficult to work on. Uh -huh. um, so most people use this stuff, which is called clough. Uh -huh. um, it, it doesn't have quite the rules of clough, which used to be clough. There's, there's three kinds. There's wait, wait, wait. There's gvil, <laughs> there's clough, gvil, and duxus. 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 Maybe we won't, get into, won't that. get into that one. Maybe detail. we won't get into that level of detail. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> so this stuff's much easier and whiter okay. and nicer and stuff like that. And it feels now, why good. is it white? Is it bleached? No, it's not bleached. They did go really? through. They did go through a period where the quality of the um, skin was so bad yeah. that they would coat it with a chalky substance, mm -hmm. a log, which is a nightmare for anybody repairing it. because uh -huh. it means I've gotten that ink, all over my hands. The ink yeah. kind of lifts off, it oh, wow. bounces off, uh, and I've fixed yeah. a number where you fix it and then you come back to it and literally next day it's bounced off again. Oh, wow. So you need to add some more extra gum arabic into the ink and stuff like uh -huh. that. So, so this is the clough. Um, so you don't work anymore, or most scribes don't work anymore with the gvil, with the with the rough stuff. They're no, mostly using most very it, thin. It's, it's cloth, and cloth is the best. Thing. And, and I was speaking to a scholar about the definition of parchment, and okay. I was I was rebuked to never use that word because it has a very narrow definition of parchment and vellum, vellum and, and, yeah. and 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 she so, she said just use the Hebrew words because those Latin words have very narrow definitions. Yeah. And even libraries will write in their their um, catalogs that it's on vellum, and they have. And she says that's completely wrong. She said you should always speak about skin based materials. Okay. And enough. I'm like, okay, okay, we're just going to use the Hebrew words, which is what she suggested, because that even those have some ambiguity, because in some texts they mean one thing, and some texts they mean another thing. But and they have to be anyway. prepared in a particular way. Right. I mean, there is only one parchment maker left in the UK and does all the stuff for Parliament. Really? And so I'm writing an article on that at the moment. But frankly, yeah. uh, if I stood behind them yeah. when they put it into the line to get rid of the hairs and, yeah. I, and I made the declaration of intent again, that could be kosher cloth. But I'd have to wait, wait, so does cloth have, have to be made with the pro intent? Absolutely. Even for a Torah scroll? Even for, but particularly for a Torah scroll. Okay. Uh, well, the only I, one you can I, I would know that for Phil and mezuzah. Mezuzah, mezuzah, you can get away with Kuntarambam, oh. get away with not having the intent. Oh, uh, and okay. also for Megillah and other... Uh, Megillah, yeah. Sort of okay. Wow. Ones. 